Right now, I'm going to ask, if you are in fifth grade or younger, if you want to come on up, and we're going to have a short time together, uh, because this is our family Sunday. Are you excited? Come on down. Well, while they're coming down, I have a couple guests, uh, Nathan Haloka and, and Caleb. Come on down. We have a couple guests, but if you guys are here, go ahead and sit right down here and look at me. So, so faith, turn, like... Yeah, sit right here and, and face me. So if you're fifth grade or younger, go ahead and come on down. Caleb and Nathan, if you want to come up here kind of on the stage. Um, and, and so the rest of you can go ahead and sit down. You can spread out. My name is Josh Stevens, and I'm the family ministries pastor here along with my wife, Carissa. Um, and so we're so excited to have the opportunity. We have such an amazing team that serves um, in kids ministry, as Pastor Tim already said. But today we get to come together. The fifth Sunday, if there's a month that has five Sundays in it, that fifth Sunday we come together with all of our kids, uh, except for the nursery, and we come together and we have a great time together. So this is our first time kind of having this kids moment. Well, today I have a, special, a couple special guests here. Can you guys give it up for Caleb? Yeah. Doesn't he look awesome? And then, and then can you give it up for Nathan? Yeah. All right. So today we're going to talk about two words. Everybody say two words. Two words. All right, so those two words are, uh, the first word we're going to talk about is perseverance. Can you say that? It's a big word. We're going to see it on the screen. Say perseverance. perseverance. Can you say it real loud? Perseverance. perseverance. All right, so perseverance. Uh, and Nathan and, and Caleb, as you can tell, do you think that they maybe do something special? What, what, sports? You think he, well, Nathan plays, what, football, right? Lacrosse? You know, soccer? What sport does Nathan play? Say it real loud. And, and, and what sport does Caleb play? Football. football, all right? So in football, do you guys have to like practice really hard? Do you ever have like multiple practices in the day? You don't? Do you ever have them? Multiple in the week? They're, maybe at some point you get to a place they call two-a-days. They're really hard. Um, and so in your practices, what are, what's one of the things you, you told me earlier you have to do? I think you have to do some running drills or something? Base running. Uh, stealing bases and stuff. Have you ever stolen a base in a game? Uh, yeah. yeah? Like successfully? Yeah. How many bases have you stolen? Five bases. That's awesome. That's the only place where it's okay to steal. Okay? <laughs> just, want, just want to be clear there. All right. And, and so, Caleb, you said that during your practice and, and stuff, you have some hard stuff that you have to do, too. What do you have to do? running drills. And so uh, I had some cones. Elliot, can you set up kind of a zigzag pattern over there on those cones while I keep talking? So uh, you have to do some running drills. Well, that's, that's awesome. And we're going to see Na uh, Caleb do some of his running drills. I wanted Ka uh, Nathan to be able to steal a base, but we just don't have the space in here uh, to do that right now. But we're going to see, we're going to see Caleb do this. But look at their uniform. What do you see about them? Are they dressed kind of weird? Like, is this what you would go to school in, Caleb? Well, maybe. Do you go to school like this? Full gear? Look, they even have cleats on and stuff. This is a uniform that they have to wear. Did you know that we have a uniform to wear to help us persevere? Do you know what that uniform is called? The armor of God. How many of you got... Good job, Josiah. Uh, how many of you got this, this color, this sheet of packet? So, so if you haven't got one of these and your parents want you to have one, they're on the back table. There's a packet of, of stuff, that crafts uh, and, and activities that you can do. Uh, and then a packet of crayons back there as well. But it's called the armor of God. And so any armor we have... Step closer, Nathan. Okay, any armor, we, we have this, this thing on top of our head. What's that called? Does anybody know? The helmet of salvation. So it's important that our head is covered right, right? And, and then we have this thing that, that's right here on, on us on the front. Does anybody know what that's called? Shoulder pads, that's right, shoulder pads. Or in, in Ephesians, it's called the breastplate of righteousness, right? And, and then it's important to keep your pants up, right, guys? H have you ever had to run? Your pants are a little loose. Do they fall down ever? No, but it's important to keep your pants up. So what do you have around your pants? A belt. The, do you guys know what that's called in the armor of God? The belt of truth, right? And then you have important shoes that you have to wear, uh, the shoes to help preach the gospel. And, and it's important to have shoes. So I'm going to, and we're going to talk about perseverance, okay? And then we're going to talk about one other word. It's called endurance. Can you say endurance real big? Real big, real loud. 
endurance. Okay, so I'm going to have both words on the screen right now. And, and I'm going to ask these guys to get in a stance that they would get in and practice. So Caleb is a lineman, and so he's going to get in an offensive lineman stance, all right? So go ahead and get in that offensive lineman stance. And then in the outfield, or in the field, um, Nathan is playing, and he's going to get in a fielding stance, okay? So, so I want you to see something about these guys. When, they come in, when, they're, when they're doing their job... Look at their feet. Do you see how far apart their feet are? Now, now, Nathan, could you put your feet close together? And if your feet are close together, what happens? You fall over. Do you ever trip over your feet if they're close together? You've done it once? Yeah. So, and, and, and look at this. Look, Caleb's real sturdy and stuff. Now, Caleb, put your feet close together. Real close together. Yeah, there we go. If your feet are close together, look what happens. <laughs> so it's important. Here's what perseverance is. Let me tell you. Perseverance... Then for you guys, when you're going through obstacles, when you're, when you're go, go ahead and go run, those, go, go run the zigzag as fast as you can, Caleb. When you're going through obstacles, it's important. So he has to step through that. He has to go through. When you encounter obstacles, it's important to persevere and keep going no matter what the obstacle. Right, Caleb? Come on back up here. And then the other word, endurance, is go ahead and stand real wide again. The other thing, endurance is when endurance is standing solid and standing firm so that nothing can shake you, so that whatever comes against you, you're able to stand. So what do you guys think we stand on? Who do we stand on? Well, who do we stand on? Yeah, Jesus. Is he our rock? Does the Bible say he's our rock? And so we stand on that rock, right? And so we, we put on the armor of God. Everybody say the armor. To, to persevere and endure. And so you, you dress right, and then you stand right, and then you can take anything on, right? Awesome job. Are you guys excited? All right. Are you excited, Maggie? All right. Great job. Go ahead and stand up, kids. You, thank you for coming and listening. And, and so go and persevere and endure the hard things in life. All right. Go ahead and go back to your seats. Can we give our kids a hand? Awesome. And so now we're going to invite... Pastor Tim up to talk about freedom. After the video. Well, here we are in week four of our freedom journey. And, you know, I hope you caught the underlying message and what we just saw in that video. Uh, and, and what we heard her say is that, is that she was talking about a process of moving toward freedom. It, in other words, it didn't just magically happened one day when she woke up. Instead, she went through this process of realizing more and more freedom over time for her life. She had to go through that process, I would say, to find freedom. And so what I want to do with you today is just talk very quickly about the seasons or the phases of freedom that we go to on our way to ultimate freedom in Jesus Christ. And you know, I don't have a big idea for you if you attend to this church regularly or, or recently. You may, you may know I'm a big fan of the big idea. I don't have one there on your outline for you. But if I did, it would be this. That no matter how old you are, no matter how long you've followed Christ, you are going to have to continually pursue freedom. Spiritual freedom. And the reason why that is, the reason why that no matter how old you are or how long you've followed Christ, that you are going to have to uh, pursue freedom over the years is because of exactly what we talked about last week. And if you weren't with us last week, you can find the, the sermon uh, last week on our website. Watch that. But, but the reason for that is because we all have a very real enemy in our lives that is, that is trying to keep us bound up trying to keep us caught up in issues that, that keep us from God's best for our lives. It's why we find over and over in our lives that we continually battle the same things, the same hang-ups, the same things over and over, and that we often have to fight our way to freedom. We have to do it. We have to fight our way toward freedom. We have to pursue freedom. And not just this morning, not just right now, not just on any given Sunday morning, but every day. In our small groups, every day. Because listen, here's the good news, is that freedom is ours to have. Amen. One of our guiding scriptures throughout this whole series has been, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom is ours to be had. The Lord sets us free from those strongholds, from those attacks of the enemy. 
And so let's take a look today at how this happens often for us. Let's look at the seasons, the phases that we all go through on our journey to freedom. And even too, I would invite you, now that we're into week four, maybe you'll identify with one or more of these seasons that you've seen, that you've experienced over the last three weeks for yourself as you've journeyed towards freedom. And in order to illustrate this, today we're going to look at an Old Testament story of the children of Israel as they strive and move toward their freedom, a journey to find freedom from their enslavement of Egyptian rule. And the story that we're going to look at today can mostly be found in Exodus, some of it in Deuteronomy, but most of it is in in Exodus. And I believe that it is a clear picture for all of us as we are attempting to find more and more freedom in our lives. Okay, is everybody with me so far? Yes. All right. Good. Well, here's phase number one. You can write it down in your outline. Here's phase number one. I call it the blahs. The blahs. The blahs. And this is the place, this is a place that if there is no action on your part and no action on my part, that the status quo will take root and nothing will change for you. It's the blahs. If we don't take action... If we don't take action, then the status quo will remain. The status quo will take root in our lives and nothing will change. We can expect no change. You know what is true about our hearts is that our hearts are like a garden. Our hearts are like a garden. And if we don't regularly weed the garden, then the weeds will grow up. If we don't regularly pull those weeds out by their roots, then they will grow up and eventually have the potential to overtake our heart, the garden of our heart. And you see what is true is that the pursuit of God and the pursuit of freedom, it doesn't end. It's, it's a constant lifetime pursuit. It goes on over time and it requires, listen to me everybody, it requires action on our part. We cannot begin to imagine that we can put it on cruise control, that we can sit back and that everything will go well for us. If we are not reading our Bible regularly, if we're not gathered with other believers often, if we're not spending time with God Himself, then very quickly and often we will see the weeds grow up in our lives and our lives will stay the same. In other words, the question for all of us today, young and old, is what are you, what am I, allowing to take root in our hearts? What are we passively standing by, observing in our lives? We know that it's there, but yet we're allowing it to take deep root in our lives. What is that thing? And is that thing a weed, or is it a healthy fruit? It's an interesting dynamic that I've seen play out in my own life, but we also see it illustrated very clearly through the life of Moses. I want to unpack that with you a little bit this morning. You know, Moses, he's, he's someone who grew up in Pharaoh's house because his biological family had to hide him. And so they hid him. He ends up in Pharaoh's house. And although he grew up in that home, he knew somehow that he just didn't belong there. He knew that it wasn't his permanent residency. And as time goes on, he begins to connect and he begins to, to fill this pull toward his own people, the Jewish people. And one day in his story, in Moses' story, he sees an Egyptian slave master mistreating a Jewish person, and he goes out and he does what? You know the story. He, he kills him. Moses was a murderer. Moses, this man of, of great faith, this, this man that if you've spent any time in church, you're familiar with his name, Moses kills this man. And right after that, Moses, he runs away. He runs away for his own safety. And he doesn't just run away for a short period of time. No, Moses runs away from this situation for 40 years. For 40 years. And he ends up being a shepherd. Watching some sheep. So Moses, if you're keeping up with me, he kills a man. He runs away for 40 years. And during that 40 years, he finds himself a shepherd. He's a shepherd. He's watching sheep. And listen, this is the same story for some of you. This is the same story. This is your story. You have a past. You have a past that you are running away from. Listen, this is a word for somebody today. You're here today and you are hoping against hope that nobody finds out the real story about you. 
that nobody finds out about what you've done or what you've been through. And you're running. You're trying to do enough things. You're trying to do enough right things to cover that one bad thing that you did. Or to cover over that thing that someone else did to you. And now you're in a place doing something that is not God's best for your life. It is not God's intention for your life. It's not even what God wants to do through your life. But you're running. You're hiding. You're a shepherd. You're a shepherd. This is for somebody today. You are a shepherd and you've been a shepherd for a long time. But God has called you to be a deliverer. It's not your calling. It's not where God wants you to be. And you're running and it's time to stop running. It's time to stop hiding from that. But that's where Moses was at. For 40 years, he's a shepherd, running from his past. And that's where we'll pick up the story. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 21, Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. And Zipporah gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom, saying, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. Do you hear it? Do you see it? Can you connect with that thought? Let me, let me say it in a different way. See, this, this in this moment, that line, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land, that is Moses' story. That's his life story. For more than 80 years, he was a foreigner in a foreign land. He was a foreigner in a foreign land as he grew up as a child into his teenage years. He was a foreigner in a foreign land. And then he kills this man and he runs off for another 40 years and he's a foreigner in a foreign land. When we don't deal with our past... When we don't deal with it, when we don't confront the lies and the lives that we live, we can repeat the same destiny over and over and we will never find freedom. We'll always feel like we just don't quite fit in. We'll begin questioning the things of God. We'll begin comparing ourselves and our situations to other people, all in an attempt to find our place. Moving from foreigner to citizen. That's the blahs, isn't it? That's the blahs. That's how I describe the blahs to you. The place where you know you're not where you should be. You're not where you need to be. But you aren't yet able to take steps to move out of that place. For some of you, you're there right now. Even as we've been moving through this series together, you haven't found yourself able to take actionable steps toward freedom for your life. I want to encourage you today, take one step. Take just one step toward freedom for your life. I'll be the first to admit, it can be overwhelming when we see where we're at, and then we see where we need to be, and we think, man, I can't get there. I just can't get there. Take one step. Just take one step in that direction. Don't feel like you have to conquer it all in one day, one week, one month, one year. Take one step in that direction. And it will pay off in the long run for you. Take one step. Pull one weed. Plant one seed. Begin exposing one lie. Begin believing one truth. Take one step. Take one step. All right, here's the second one. Here's the second season or phase that we can find ourselves in as we journey to freedom. It's the, it's the second one there on your outline. I call it the break. Break. Just write down the word break. You know, for many people, and I've known a few, that leave the Christian faith, they often do so because they've bought into a lie that to be a Christian means that it requires nothing of me. It means that I can say yes to Jesus and then just live my life however I want to and it requires nothing from me. And that's simply not true. We have to put action with our faith. Moses' story in particular, it tells us that truth. And what happens for far too many of us, and I've alluded to this before, is that we begin to normalize the bondage that we're in, don't we? We've begun to think over time and we begin to accept over time that the issues we struggle with are normal. They're normal for us, and they're normal for everybody else. We say things like, well, it's normal. Or everybody, you know, everybody hates their job. Or everybody hates school. And we begin to normalize that lie in our lives. We begin to live with it. Or it's normal. It's normal to live paycheck to paycheck. 
It's normal to check your net worth week after week. And what is true about these and many other examples that we can list here today is that these are all things that have kept us in bondage for far too long. We're believing lies. We've bought into lies and then we've normalized them in our life. We somehow believe that those things are normal behavior and if we think they're normal, then we'll never break free from them. And I want to tell you there's more for you. There's more for you than that. So my question for you this morning is, have you grown accustomed to not being free? Have you normalized a lack of freedom in your life? Because if you have, and we all do it, here's what you've got to do. You've got to make a decisive move, a decisive move toward freedom. You've got to take that step. You've got to move decisively in the direction of freedom. Exodus 12 illustrates this very clearly for us. Now, the length of time the Israelite people lived in Egypt was 430 years. And at the end of the 430 years, to the very day, catch that, to the very day, all the Lord's divisions left Egypt. You see, what happened on the very day is that they made a decisive move towards freedom. They left. They decided they were going to do it, and they did it. They did it. They made that decisive move. And listen, you will always know when your break hits. You will know when it happens for you. Maybe, maybe for you, it's that moment in time when you finally said to the people you trust the most, hey, when I do something wrong, I want you to call me out on it and mean it. Or maybe, maybe for you, it's like we witnessed here in the baptismal today, that, that, that when you take a decisive step and you decide to, to take a step toward freedom through baptism, saying, I'm breaking from the things of my past, and I'm going to live a new life, a new creation in Jesus Christ. I'm making a break today, and that becomes your moment of break. Or maybe it's when you open up to your small group and let them see the person that you really are. I'm under no illusion that for some of you, you're doing everything you can to not let your small group inside. Week after week, you'll talk about how you're living the dream and everything's all right for you. But I'll submit to you that the small groups and the guide that we're working through, these are designed to help everyone open up about the things that we're struggling with, the things that are keeping us from God's best, the things that are keeping us from freedom in our lives. And I'd encourage you to open up and find your breakthrough. Because whatever it is for you, Whatever it is for you holding you back, take a decisive step. Take that step and experience freedom because what I know is true is that that first step is always the hardest. The first step is always the hardest. And it may not be easy after that first step, but it's easier. So take the first step, find that path to break through for yourself, and get there. Get there. All right, here's number three. Here's the third season or phase. It's called the blues the blues. I wish I was a singer. I'd sing maybe a blues song to you, but everybody would leave in mass if I did that. You know, these, these phases, these, 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 these seasons that I'm explaining to you, everybody that's on a journey, a true journey to freedom, we're going to all experience these things. And they're not linear in nature. Some, some you'll, you'll find that you're in the blahs, and then you find a break, but then you go back to the blahs. It's okay. That's all normal. That's why it's, it's a lifetime pursuit. We've got we've to do it and keep moving in that direction. But listen, here's, here's, here's a staggering truth. The blues. It's when you start working on it, and then you start having regrets and want to go back. That's the blues. When you start working on it, and you have regrets and want to go back. Because listen, you find yourself comfortable in those old shoes. You find comfort there. You've been living that way for a long time and it's comfortable. It gives you a sense of safety. It gives you a sense of predictability about life. And when you take steps toward freedom, you begin longing for that life that you've just left. You've been, you, you find yourself longing for those days. No matter how unhealthy or how destructive those days may have been for you, you can easily find yourself with regret and wanting to go back. Maybe some of you are there. Maybe it's an addiction that, you, that you've worked to beat, but you just can't say no when that temp- temptation comes along. Or maybe it's a relationship that you know is not good for you, but you keep going back. 
That's the blues. Thinking about a friend of mine who visited a foreign country a few years ago, and he was in an orphanage in that city uh, internationally, and, and uh, he was visiting the or- orphanage. In this particular orphanage in this country, they were helping children. Uh, they were helping children break free from some bad stuff that they were a part of, and, and so this orphanage housed them, educated them, fed them, kept them safe, and so my friend was visiting there, and the missionary was just, was just talking about the work that they were doing, and as they were walking around this campus, this orphanage, uh, my friend noticed that there was a really high uh, cement wall that went all the way around the orphanage, and he remarked to the missionary, he said, oh, uh, you know, is that, is that to keep these people from coming back and getting these kids? And the missionary said, well, yeah, yeah, you know, that, that happens from time to time. But the real reason the wall is there is because these kids keep trying to get out and go back to the life that they knew. Because it's what they knew. It's the life that they knew. For them, somehow, as dysfunctional as it was, that became real to them. That, that, was, that was comfort to them, to be in that predictable environment. And so kids were always trying to escape, and so they built this wall all the way around it, even though they had luxuries they had never known before. Three meals a day, a robust education, safety, physical safety for themselves. They still tried to escape and go back to that life. And for many of us, we're like that, aren't we? We're caught up in stuff, and when we try to break free, we find ourselves tempted to go back to the way it was with old friends, old habits, and old places that simply aren't good for us. We see this story unfold in Exodus 2. Maybe you're familiar with it, Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 and 3. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. In the desert, I'm sorry, uh, if if only we died in Egypt, there, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. They were, they were tortured. They, they were treated brutally. But yet somehow in their freedom, they longed to go back to that familiar place. They wanted to go back. They didn't want to work through the struggle to get to the promised land or their freedom place. Because the journey to freedom, everybody, it isn't easy. I've never promised you easy in this journey. It's hard. But what I have promised you is that it is worth it. It is worth it every time. They didn't want to go through the tough times. They wanted to go back to the familiar. And we can do that too. Some of you are right there. This is week four and you've been taking steps. You've been opening up to your small group. You've been memorizing scripture. You've been replacing lies with truth. But you feel that tug. And maybe for some of you, you've actually ended up back there recently. So how do we overcome this? How do we do it? I love, I love what Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's how we do it. We've got to transform our minds. Our minds are the biggest battlefield, the biggest preventative thing to keep us from this place of freedom. Because what happens is when we do take steps, we begin to long for the past. We begin to regret these steps that we've taken, and we want to go back somehow. If you've been, <coughs> excuse me, if you've been following along with us in, uh, in your workbooks, how many of you have been following along in the workbook? Go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, all right. Had to do that, otherwise this activity is not going to work very well. So in your workbooks... It asks you, after a series of question, to, questions, to identify which color you are. Yes? yes? See some nods, some heads nodding. And so if you haven't been through, I think, week two, then you're a little behind. You won't be able to respond to this. But, uh, but the first color that you can identify with is the color red. And it, it is for bitter and angry. And so how many of you, your primary color was red? Go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah, it's okay. It's a safe place. It's all right. Don't be angry at me. But, okay, all right, okay. Secondly is yellow. This one is rejected and unloved. How many of you identified most with the yellow? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Next is green. How many of you identified with green, which was fear and stress? Yep. You found, you found the confidence to get over your fear and raise your hand. Just and, yep, that's good, that's good. Might have been a little stressful for you, I apologize. 
And then blue. Blue is religion and pride. How many of you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, this, this is an amazing tool to help us identify where we are in our freedom journey. And I believe that it has definitive steps in it, along with the, the accountability and the conversation with your small groups, these Sunday messages, to help you take steps toward freedom. And this book, it instructs us in this week, doesn't it, to memorize Scripture. One of the biggest ways to renew your mind is to, is to memorize Scripture. Because when those temptations come, when you're tempted to go back, when you're tempted to, to go back to old friends and old ways and old habits and old addictions, to be able to quote Scripture over your life is a way to overcome that. And so dig in, dig in. And I hope that you've been working through this guide. If you haven't started, or maybe you put it on a shelf and you haven't gotten it out for a couple weeks, get it out. Get it out and go through it, because it will help you, especially in those times when you feel that tug to go back to those things that are familiar. But the truth is, and that I'd encourage you with today, is to press on. Press on. Push forward. Don't go back. Find freedom for your life. And here's the fourth one. You can write it down on your outline. The fourth phase, the fourth season for all of us is this place of blessing. This place of blessing, this season of blessing. I would say it this way, that seasons of God's blessing, God's abundant goodness, often come as a result of pressing toward freedom. It's no coincidence that this is the fourth message out of six, because this is the time where we get tired. This is the time when, you know, I've been through it. Okay, Pastor Tim, I went to three small groups. I gave that a chance. I wasn't comfortable. It didn't make me feel good. So I'm going to be sick tonight when you guys meet. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay home and watch the Pacers win. Woo! <laughs> I'm going to find that excuse to not go back to my small group. I'm going to find that excuse to not dig into the workbook. I'm going to find that excuse to not be back here again next Sunday. Listen, press on. Press forward. Because it's when you press forward that you experience God's blessing in your life. And I bet I could speak for all of us here. We want more of that, don't we? We want more of God's blessing. Press forward. Press forward and we'll see it. We will see it and we'll experience freedom and blessing. So the Israelites, how do we read it there? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 21 and 22. Do not be terrified by them, for the Lord your God who is among you is a great and awesome God. Receive that today. He's with you. He is here. He is helping you on your freedom journey. And he's great. And he's awesome. He wants the best for you. And the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you, little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once, or the wild animals will multiply around you. You see, what's being said here is that you're not going to experience freedom all at once. It's not going to come to you all at once. It will come, but it won't happen all at once. In fact, it will happen little by little. It will happen a little bit at a time, over time. So in other words, because it happens over time, little by little, we have to press on all the more. We cannot give up. We've got to keep working at it. We've got to take that next step. We've got to keep going to our small group, keep working on our workbook, keep asking God to help. And as my dad, a great pastor in the faith who's went on to see the Lord, always used to say, we've got to keep on keeping on. We've got to keep at it. We've got to keep going. We've got to keep at it. Little by little, we will see blessing in our life and we will find freedom more and more in our lives. Now I want to mention here at the end today that we should recognize that this journey to freedom, it really doesn't happen in a step-by-step, -step, neat, organized, orderly fashion. And for some of us, for some of us, listen, the thing that we're working to break free from, it's possible and maybe even probable that we won't experience complete freedom until we enter into heaven. Because of terrible things that we've been through, awful things that have been done to us, we won't be able to experience full freedom on this side of heaven. And it's possible for some of us, I would even say for many of us, that we need some extra help to get there. If we are to experience true freedom because of the stuff we've been through, we need some extra help getting past all of that stuff. We need a professional therapist. We need a professional counselor. We need somebody to come along that has the education and the experience to help us truly break free. And there are great Christian resources right here in our own community to help us get there. 
And I want to encourage you, if that's you, find that help. I can refer you to people. I know people that can help you with that. It's important to recognize that, though. But whatever your situation is, no matter what your goal is here, and those aren't reasons to give up, those are reasons to continue on your freedom journey, let's all continue together and keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. God's Word tells us that those that wait on the Lord, they'll renew their strength. And they'll mount up on eagle's wings. They'll fly. They'll soar. They won't be tired. We wait on the Lord. Press on. Keep on keeping on. And you know, there are so many things that Moses went through in his story. He was orphaned as a baby. He grew up in a home that wasn't his lineage and was full of times when he questioned his place. Moses had a, a short fuse. He had a temper. Moses was a murderer. Moses had a speech impediment. He dealt with doubt about himself a lot. And after everything he did, everything he went through, listen, if this is you today, take comfort that you're in good company with Moses. After everything he went through, he wasn't able to cross over into the promised land because of a poor choice he made. He wasn't able to fully experience freedom here on earth. His own family mocked him. And he never got to that point of experiencing freedom here on earth. And here's the sobering truth for us all today. Is that seasons of blessing, they don't last forever. Somehow we, we can imagine very easily that when we get some of God's blessing in our life, something works for us, something happens for us, we find that breakthrough in one area of our lives, that somehow that will continue for a lifetime. But what is true time and time again is that we've got to work at it. We've got to work toward it. We've got to, we've got to find that, that we are on this constant pursuit. And that is a sobering truth. It happens little by little. It happens faithfulness by faithfulness. Pressing on and making the decision each and every day to take that one step toward freedom in your life. Here's how Paul puts it in the New Testament book of Philippians. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on. I press on toward it. When it gets hard, I press on. When the temptation to go back is strong, press on. When you don't want to go to your small group, press on. When you're having a horrible day, press on. Whatever it is you're dealing with, press on. Whether you're in the blahs, the breaks, the blues, a season of blessing, press on. Press on toward the goal to which God is calling you. God is calling you to freedom. It's His best for your life. This isn't a Pastor Tim truth. This is, this is a God truth. He wants nothing more for you than freedom in your life. So press on. Press on. Find out which phase you're in and get to the next one. Find blessing in your life because what is true is that something great lies on the other side if you'll press on. Worship team, if you'll come back and join me up here.